take a look at this. This is a clip from the most recent rally that I've done in RBR, Sim Rally Masters Championship, coming to the end of one of the first stages in the rally. And I want you to watch how I take this, this final corner of the stage. Right, coming up to complete the first lap. There's one, two more of those. All right, all in all, that's a pretty tricky corner to actually get around uh, hopping onto a very narrow road, but coming from a quite a high speed in fourth gear and braking down, turning right at first gear, a little bit of handbrake there to get the car around the corner. At first glance, I would say I did a pretty decent job with that. I kept the car on the road and hit anything, which is always one of the first goals of doing rally. But I'll tell you that I'm not completely happy with how I took it. And let's rewind and uh, take a look maybe in slower motion here. And it's not necessarily a mistake, but more of a bad habit. As I'm coming to the corner, we're going fourth gear, about 140 kph, and I shift it down into third gear to get the car started to be slowed and get heavy on the brakes. I'm at about 80% braking in third gear as the car slows down uh, when I go and shift it into second gear. And if you watch, as I shift it down, get it into neutral, my brake pedal application actually comes off quite a lot as I go to blip the throttle. And as I get into second gear, I'm all the way down to about 30% braking force, down from nearly 80%. So that's a reduction of 50% braking force as I shift it down and do the blip on the throttle. Uh, if I continue forward a little bit more, brakes come back up I'm around 70% again of brakes, almost 80% as we come into the corner then, blip it again for another shift down to 15, 15 braking as we get it down into first gear as i get it down into first gear and then reapply the brakes a bit more ultimately come into the corner at around 60 percent brake finally let off the brakes into trail braking a little bit actually put the clutch in and give it a little handbrake that's more of a rally thing you know although i am successfully making it through the corners i'm ultimately extending my braking zones by not being so hard on the brakes the whole time and i'm compensating for that because i'm making the corners and actually getting through the stages and things but it's making my braking take a lot longer than it probably needs to take. Now this isn't something abnormal, it's probably extremely normal to fluctuate a lot on the brake pedal as you're doing heel and toe. It's incredibly difficult to manage the throttle, hit the throttle to make sure your differential doesn't lock up and that you can smoothly work down through the gears while you're downshifting aggressively. It's so hard to keep your foot steady on the brakes, but I think this illustrates that I'm doing, in my opinion, a pretty poor job at, at modulating that brake, fluctuating sometimes upwards of 50% on the brakes, and ultimately that means I'm going to be pushing my braking zones quite a lot further. So this is something I've wanted to work on and try to get a little bit better at. And I think I've thought of an interesting way to do that. Welcome to good old cheese country, Wisconsin, and most importantly, the best part of Wisconsin, Road America. To do a little bit of testing, I'm in a Seto Corsa now with the Alpha GTA, a beautiful little car that is uh, one of my favorites, one of the stock cars, I believe, in this game, and the perfect car and track combination, I think, to test something like this. Much easier to do this on a circuit rather than uh, try to do it on the rally stage first try, but the concepts will be the same anywhere. And so I'm sat in the car. I've got quite a lot on screen compared to what I usually do, but I will pull away here and let me explain what's going on. Now, I've got this cool app you're seeing right above my, uh, my foot cam that's made by Sergey Andresen. I believe that's how you pronounce their name, available over at Overtake. This is an awesome telemetry app that's gonna show you uh, my, my throttle and brake inputs, uh, as well as my clutch. But the green line is the throttle pedal and the current percentage. If it's at 100, it's at the top. If it's at zero, it's at the bottom. And then I've got my brake pedal as well, which will uh, help, help track things visually. But the app that I want to talk about is a SimHub app. And you're seeing it at the bottom of the screen. It says, waiting for downshift. And this is a little app that I've built to uh, hopefully help track and, and work on and improve this type of behavior in downshifting while doing heel and toe. Think of it as a little coach that can give you a score and tell you how good or bad that you're doing. So let me explain what this app does. Quite simply, it's measuring your brake inputs and giving you a score based on how successfully you keep that brake pedal steady as you're braking. Let me try it here down into turn number five. A little over revving there as I teeter on in. But I just got a C grade, 21% on two downshifts. So that means my brake pedal varied 21% in that, in that braking zone. It measures one half second 
before you start braking and then monitors the brake pedal for the next second throughout the whole downshift blip cycle and sees how much it fluctuates and gives you a score based on that. It averages out multiple downshifts and grades you kind of like a coach would to tell you whether or not you're doing a good job. Let's try another one here. whacking that second gear down, but I'm 46%. And if you look at the trace as it comes across the screen, you can see how much I dipped off the brake there without even really thinking about it as I did my second blip down into second gear. I'll try one more time here as I come down a Canada corner. Toughest braking zone on this track, but we'll get down three gears here. And I'm not trying not to look at the trace right now just to, to keep my eyes off of it, but a C grade, 27.8%. Uh, and so I've arbitrarily given this thing grades. Under 10% is an A. That's so good if you can if you can keep the brake pedal steady uh, under 10% variance. Up to 20% is a B, up to 30% is a C, and so on until you fail, I guess if you're over 40% or so. Uh, the metric itself isn't so important, but it's more understanding what you're doing. And if I stop on the track here, uh, you can actually try this while you're, while you're steady. If I put the car in fourth gear because we're stopped you don't need to blip the throttle at all so if i put brake my brake pedal on and try to hold it steady around 50 percent and uh, just slowly kind of go down the gears it's going to grade this as if we're downshifting and we'll get a great grade 0.5 percent <laughs> that would be unreal if you're able to do that or you're probably not heel towing itself so i've built this little app just in sim hub to give you these grades and the great thing is it works it should work basically in any sim because it's just reading the break and, and uh, downshifting which should be pretty universal across different sims so although i'm doing it in a set of Corsa here, you could definitely use it in RBR or R Factor or, or Automobilista or whatever game that you like. And so what's what's really hard about all of this is trying to keep that brake pedal steady as you're you're putting your foot on the throttle. And uh, I've watched professionals do this. I think in the news, at least in the in the states, is Shane Van Gisbergen and how phenomenal he is on road courses in NASCAR and how he does heel toe shifting. And even if you watch onboards with him, the brake pedal. I mean, he's got G forces and things as well, but the brake pedal's obviously moving, fluctuating as he's braking. But I can guarantee you he's a whole lot better at it than I am. And it's one of these things to just try to improve a little bit. So we've got some great tools to read stuff like this, but how do you actually get better? And one of the things I've been reading about is, is practicing your heel and toe as you're actually just stationary. You don't have to worry about actually downshifting or anything like that. You can have your foot uh, your foot on the brake, try to hover around that 50% mark and then figure out the pressure change that's needed to apply some throttle without really dipping dipping the uh, the brake all that much. And you can see the natural compensation for it is that you push the brake on, you hit the throttle, it dips down, and then it overcompensates back the other side. And that's just gonna lead to uh, to locked tires and, and running a bit wide, extending the braking zones to actually get the car slowed down. So it's, it's trying to figure out how to get your pressure in your foot to change so that you can get the blip on, but the brakes don't dip quite as much. And I think from what I've read, uh, if you can get within that 15% fluctuation, you're doing such a good job. And that's where the A and the B grade for this, for this little app come from. We'll come down to turn number one. It's it's a two shift down to third gear. And we'll try to get the car slowed down. Now, I think it's a mistake, a C grade, 29%. I think it's a mistake to watch things like the telemetry while you're doing these activities because it's, it's only gonna train you to watch those things. And when you remove them, you're gonna have learned uh, more of the, the visual indicator. That one was quite good. I like my brake trace there. I think it's great to look at after you've done it. As a reflection, that's why I've got the grid. I, I thought about doing some real time, like color changes as your pressure changes, but that's just teaching you to watch the app, not reflect how a teacher would tell you, you know, okay, that was good, you, you did this wrong. And so using these tools to help reflect on what you've done, even if it's more or less in real time like this, I think can be, can be quite helpful as we come down to turn five, the problem corner.
And as I mentioned, it averages together uh, multiple downshifts. So if you do three downshifts like that, and I got a C grade on it, it will uh, it will average them out. So if one of them was better than the others, they'll all stabilize a little bit. And I think it is the averages in a braking zone that ultimately matter. The app also is smart enough to weed out uh, downshifts if you do a downshift without braking at all. And that one's got a little bit of brake. Yeah, but if you do downshifts without braking at all like that, or braking very little under 10% or so, it, uh, it won't count those since you didn't actually use the brakes to do the downshift uh, and stuff like that. We'll give it another try into Canada Corner here. This is a tough one because you're going down multiple gears slid the back end in a little bit quite bad there and if I'm looking at my traces it's it's that third downshift that's that's so problematic for me but let me try doing a few laps and working on this a little bit and seeing if I if I can improve it all with some of these tools Was awful but I got a good grade though Finally get a, a better than a C, I'll take it, through Canada Corner. It's been my nemesis. I've run the car out of fuel three different times trying to do this for the past over an hour now. Uh, but this is the type of thing I think will take quite a long time to get good at. You're changing kind of core muscle memory, but even in the hour that I've spent doing it, I've gone from getting, you know, Ds and Fs and sometimes a C in corners to pretty routinely getting Bs and an occasional A, uh, maybe C at the worst through most corners. And so I'm definitely already noticing a little bit of an improvement, even just with a short time, keeping my eye on things and, and getting this type of feedback. I've even pulled out the literature to help with this one. I got so desperate. The book uh, Speed Secrets from Ross Bentley, I'm sure many folks have heard of, has a little section on heel toe. And uh, the biggest takeaway I had from this, the biggest takeaway I had from this was, was where on the pedal I'm actually using. It says to use the ball of your right foot. And uh, I think in, in my years of doing this, I've just kind of developed using more of my toes to do the brake pedal, but I've, I've tried shifting up to use more of the ball of my foot, which is gonna use more of your leg muscle and I think just give you greater uh, control over what you're doing, especially for longer term. And it's these types of adjustments, doing big changes to driving style is always gonna feel like a regression at first, at least in my experience. You're gonna spend hours being slower, doing slower lap times, messing up more. Can't tell you how many corners I've blown trying to adjust my downshifting style, but it's, a, it's about trying to practice the right pattern so that once you do catch on, you'll actually end up in a higher place than you were uh, to begin with. If you have good habits, they end up becoming better long-term skills instead of having bad habits, but just getting good at them. 
So I hope you enjoyed this, a little foray into analyzing driving technique and just trying to change things and, and work on those little things that get you better over time. I'm gonna make the little app I made for SimHub a download. I'll probably host it somewhere. I'll put it in the description of the video. So if you try it out, let me know if it, uh, if it works for you and if it helps kind of analyze your own technique. Or if you have any tips on how I can get better at it selfishly, uh, let me know. I'm, I'm gonna keep working on this a bit and I'm, I'm not gonna run this app when I'm actually competing, but I think just having it uh, available in a practice sense helps me notice what I'm doing and, and already in this short amount of time, I feel like it's made a little bit of a difference. I'm not sure. Only time will tell. But thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, let me know because I'm sure there's so many more things I could work on and um, I'm always up for curious ways to be doing that. So I'm sure I'll be back again soon with another one of these things. But until then, this is GP Laps and I'll see you all again next time. Mm -hmm.